Hello there, everybody. I'm Captain Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach, and I'm the founder of the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program, creator of Dream Business Academy, founder of No Hassle Newsletters, as you know, and host of Dream Business Radio now in its 10th year. This is episode 514. <laughs> wow. Welcome to another fantastic live edition of Dream Business Radio. My special guests, Rachel Smets. And Rachel, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. I'm excited, Jim. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're as we say, well, I think with the UK, we say other side of the pond. Do we say that for Australia as well? Because I think that's where you are, right? Yeah, I'm currently, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, not always. I keep traveling, but yeah, we'll talk about that later. But I think that what you could say is just down under, you know, that's what they say. And down under, that's right. Okay. Hey, folks, this episode of Dream Business Radio is brought to you by the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program. If you're an entrepreneur, small business owner who's tired of slow to no growth, if you're feeling overwhelmed, unfocused, and especially if you want to learn how to create multiple streams of revenue in your business, which is the quickest way to generate an income that'll get your dream business to live your dream lifestyle check out my program at dream biz coaching dream biz coaching.com let me tell you a little bit about my special guest and we'll dive right in because we got a lot in common rachel smetz is a clarity coach she's a solo traveler speaker and motivator her traveling journey began in 2003 when she left her home country to move abroad this was the beginning of an exciting and scary journey as it usually is when you when you take off and do something crazy or fun or wild in her 30s rachel pursued a bachelor's degree in psychology in the united states and her master's degree in management in the uk and armed with two summa cum laude degrees rachel landed a job in corporate um well, not corporate America, corporate world, I guess, would be the right way to say that, where she then climbed the ladder. And as many who listen to this job and this radio show all, know all too well, she was very successful on the outside, but miserable on the inside. Isn't that like the genesis and the, the launching pad for so many entrepreneurs? So Rachel felt stuck, not knowing how to get out, no clear direction. And then she basically quit her nine to five. And now she lives life without permission, as she likes to say. <laughs> Rachel, yeah. I'm going to let you fill in so many of the answers that I'm sure our, our listeners are having. But um, so one of the things I know that Mike, because we've been doing this podcast since 2009. No, yeah, 2011. I forget now. T time just goes whoosh, oh, whizzing yeah. by. <laughs> I don't know about you, but um, they always tell me we love we love the tactics and the strategies and the learning, but we also love the backstories. We find it very inspirational. So, fill in some of the holes that I didn't do. Like, what caused you to when you got in corporate America? Did you go this sucks, or did it just suck over a period of time? And then, how did you get yourself out of that? Yeah. Oh, great question. Um, okay, good. So. Um, yeah, and sometimes I'm like, okay, who's interested in my story, right? But if it can help somebody, then I'd sure. love to. Sure, of course. Um, I think, well, I know I, I, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur in my, in my heart and soul and blood, right? I just yeah. say I'm an entrepreneur in my life. So when I, I pursued that bachelor and master's degree because I thought, okay, if I want to enter the corporate world, I need that ticket, I need that paper, right? And so I thought, okay, let me do that. So I did that in my mid thirties, like you said correctly, and then I entered the corporate world and. Yeah, it didn't take long at all, you know, that I'm like, really, like working for a boss, it's just not me, right? Yeah. But I did it on purpose, Jim, because I wanted to know what it's like. I just wanted to know, okay, what are the luxuries of an employee? Because mm -hmm. there are, you have the benefits, you have insurance. I had a great car, petrol. Paid vacation, all like, that. Yeah, you know, insurance is like, you know, there's so many benefits. And then, and also the benefit of, ah, I'm, I'm sick. I can't come, you know, whereas an entrepreneur is sick or not sick. You, you gotta, you gotta be there. You gotta That's serve right. the client. You know? So it, it never stops. Um, so I, I thought, okay, let me just, you know, let me just enjoy those, you know, benefits. Um, but even that, even that, even with those benefits, the burden of having to ask permission to buy a pencil and buy a piece of paper and, and take a day off and, and mm -hmm. that, like, oh, you know, it, yeah, after a few years, I'm like, I'm not going to last 10 years. Yeah. And I last nine. So um, but one, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. One of the things I'm always curious about is, and I'm thinking I know the answer to this. You're a first generation entrepreneur in your family no parents grandparents because when you yeah. said i got to go get the degree yeah. that's that's like the normal path right so that's kind of yeah. what you did yeah yeah okay. yeah i did and well i i mean my mom is a true entrepreneur my dad wasn't so i guess i got a bit of both so i, okay. I wanted to try a bit of both 
Um, but yeah, but for me, the thing that you didn't mention and that really got was like the, the turning point was my burnout. I, I, I really, here's the thing, Jim, I, I was earning well and I had all these benefits, but also, you know, I was climbing the corporate ladder and then you get these people, are, wow, you're doing so well, great title, great status. And then you're like, oh, okay. You know, and you follow the crowd and you follow the, the, what they say. Yeah. And you just push yourself, okay, let me just try and get another promotion. Let me just try and get another role, right? And so you keep climbing until I realized I was on the wrong ladder because I it was just not me. And I burned out, mm. right? And and that was the best thing that ever happened to me because otherwise I would have probably kept doing that. And that burnout made me like completely stop and like, Rachel, what is it that you really want? Did you burn out? And um, was the burnout like... um I mean, did you like, I just can't get out of bed. I can't go to work. I just can't do this anymore. Was it, was it, was it a, a proper, real like stopping point? Yeah, it was a proper, proper, because people use burnout quite lightly sometimes, yeah. but it was a, it was a literally, I could not read one page. I could not, I, I just, I wasn't myself. I was completely like, it was such a weird thing. Like you, you're not, it was hard for me to understand because I'm an entrepreneur. I'm always working, always active, always go, 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 very ambitious. And then I was like, I don't feel like doing anything. I don't feel like talking. I don't feel like read. I couldn't read. I couldn't read a page. I was just not, you know, able to quote. It was, and the, the problem is to tell people, it, I was really like ashamed because I thought, okay, you know, when you have a broken leg or broken arms, like, look, look, physically I'm hurt, but I was hurt inside and I couldn't yeah. show it. And it's so, it was so hard to admit to that. Did you yeah. end up quitting your job before you knew what you were going to do? Or did you say, I have to stop, and then you figured it out? Um, I went back. I went oh. back after my burnout. Okay. Uh, because I hadn't figured it out. And so that's what I tell people all the time. Like, don't take the leap because you need the money. And just exactly what you said. You need mm -hmm. multiple streams of income, whatever it is, but you need money coming in. So I had no idea what I was going to do. But it did make me realize that I needed to change and that I needed to get out of there. So that moment was the best thing that ever happened to me because it really made me do the work and figure out. And that's exactly what I help my clients with too. It's that's figuring out like, what is it that I'm good at? What is it that I can do if I leave? So, mm. yeah. So, so, so that's exactly where I was. So I did go back for a little bit again for the money, but I went back okay. with a different mindset. I went back. And that was the nice part. I went back thinking, you know what, guys? In my mind, I knew I was not going to stay, but just give me some more money here so that I have a leave, you know, that I have a, a bit of a leeway to, to get going. Okay. You know, on your website, I saw the phrase, wake up to the life you love. Like what steps, and that's largely what you do today. Am I right? You help people. We're in the various stages of burnout, or at least they're unhappy in their job. Yeah. You help them find a, a better way, right? Yeah. And how, so how do you do out. that? Yeah. Okay. It's the, the, the figuring out of, okay, if, if, if I leave, what, what will I do to bring in money? So, um, so I call it from paycheck to purpose, right? It's, um, it's, it's figuring out who you really are. Mm -hmm. So it's really figuring out not what people are saying about you because that really misleads you, you know, Oh, Oh, Jim, you're so good in, in, in IT and in tech, you know, you should really do that and do more of that. Is that what you really want? No, you're good at communicating. You love talking. You love helping and coaching people, right? So, so it's about stop listening to other people and really finding out what are your strengths, your talents, your passion. And you know how hard that is when years and years and years you've been pushed into different directions, right? And you've been pushed to like, okay, do this and do this and do this. And you forget. You forget what you really want to do, what you're really passionate about. And it's not just passion, okay? I talk about the sweet spot all the time because with passion alone, you can't, you know, you love cooking, but you, it's not going to make you money. You love singing, it's not going to make you money. So it's a sweet spot between the talent, the passion, and your mission. Okay. And that, that's what we figure out. And then we create a very clear goal. And a goal, not the smart goal like everybody in business talks about. No, a real goal. I don't know if you've ever, you know, if you know Bob Proctor, I followed the sure. program and I'm very, I had to learn the mindset. That's another thing. Okay. Cause I always talk about two things, the action and the mindset mm -hmm. and me coming from an upbringing of you have to work hard and earn money and work hard and, you know, and, and logical and rational. I did not have a proper belief in myself. 
or belief that I could earn money online and easily. I, I could not believe that. Like, who, why me? Like, huh? Um, so, so it's these two things. So it's, it's creating a goal that is something that you really want, but you just have no idea how to get there. So, and then it's also overcoming a lot of fears. What are others going to say? I was 40 years old. I'm like, oh, terrified about what my parents are going to say. 40 yeah. years old. Like, but we are, you know, your partner, your loved ones. Um, fears, like what if I fail? Like all these limiting beliefs and fears, it's, 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 it's huge, you know, because you're leaving years and years and years. And you know what I'm talking about, years of working in, in a job, you know, and you're plunging in the deep end. So I'm always saying like, don't jump without a parachute. We need a plan. And that's the plan. It's figuring out, okay, what are you good at? What's your goal? Let's figure that out. Let's take actions towards it. Let's see that money is coming in and then you're, you can resign. So Rachel, do you typically help people, uh, for lack of a better description, create a side hustle while they're still working just to see if they can do it? Or do you help people like, you've got to have the courage to exit because then there's no net, then, then you really have to go. No, uh, you know, all of the clients that I've helped, they, they, yeah, they're also like, you know, ambitious, entrepreneurial, there's something there. So, so it doesn't take long to figure out, okay, you know what, I, I want to, I want to be a coach, I want to help other people, or I mm -hmm. want to, you know, something, you know, or create events or like, there's some career in them. So we do start, yes, we do start taking action to, to, to generate money, or at least know that, okay, if I continue this route, money will be coming in. Yeah. Okay. So who do you typically work with then? Are these in the 30 to 40 year olds or more 50 to 60? Like they really got a good 20, 25 years under their belt, yeah. but now there's, they're yeah. starting to see the, the, the end of the line down yeah. the road. Exactly. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. the 40 the ish. I mean, yes, I have a few below 40. I have a few, I even have one and she was nearly 70 and she's like, I, I still want to figure out what I really, you know, uh, she didn't want to stop. So, but yeah, it, it's like 40, 50, you know, um, it's, it's, it's when you hit that moment of, do I need to continue this until I retire? You know, that, that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what role does fear play with your, with your typical client that you work with? I mean, I'm fear must be a mat and yeah. fear is like the 10,000 foot view. Yeah. I mean, there's imposter yeah. syndrome, fear, you know, all yeah. these different things that work. Yeah. What yeah. I'm sure that's a huge part of what you do. Exactly. Yeah, it's huge. It's big. It's big. And it's it's the one thing that that held me back for a very long time as well. You know, it's like, oh, fear of the, OK, the three. Let me just put it this way. The three biggest one are fear of failure, fear of the unknown. You, you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen um, and fear of what others will say. So if you don't mind, I'll just tackle those sure. briefly. So fear of the unknown okay very very common because you don't know what's going to happen in the job you have structure you have routine like you you know you know what to do you have a schedule things are you know uh, you know the people that is the unknown now here's the thing jim people think they fear the unknown i used to think that okay um it's not the fear of the unknown it's the fear of the loss of the known mm. Because we we are so familiar with the known, even if we don't like it, we're familiar with the boss, the colleagues, the structure, the, the deadlines, the schedule, with the meetings. We're familiar with that. We don't like it, but it's known. And we have to let go of all of that known to come into an unfamiliar, unknown, like, mm. you know, create new. But that's the beauty. And that's what people have to realize. The beauty is that you create your future. You design you know, I call about the freedom lifestyle. You do, you redesign your life because you as an entrepreneur, you design how you want it to be. You design your schedule. You design your routine. You design the people around you. So, so it's letting go of the familiar and stepping into the unfamiliar. But hey, the fun the fun begins in the outside of the comfort zone, right? So yeah. Um, but it's you know comfort is the enemy of change. So if you want to change something, you got to be uncomfortable. It's just the only way. There's no other way. I mean, there's no doubt that not everybody's cut out to be an entrepreneur. So if somebody's burned out in the corporate world, they're just feeling unfulfilled. Is that usually the way you go or do you help them find that maybe there's just another job that you would yeah. really feel good about? That's true. Um, and that's what I keep saying. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be. But to be honest, I do 
tend to work more with people that are more of an entrepreneurial mindset. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, because yes, there are a lot of coaches out there that like, you know, okay, let's find you another job, which is great. You know, uh, for me, I really prefer the ones that are like, no, I really, really want something like completely different. I don't like to work for a boss. Right. So I don't want to go back for a boss. So th those are kind of my, my, yeah, my clients. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the biggest thing every entrepreneur needs to do, in my opinion, they need to learn to be the rainmaker. I mean, if you can't sell, if you can't sell yourself, I don't care what kind of skill and passion you have, you have yeah. to bring in money. It's yeah. nice to have your business card said, I'm the, you know, yeah. chief cook and bottle washer, <laughs> CEO of my corporation. But if you've got no revenue, you don't have a business. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, and, and I don't help to set up a business, but I do help to really give that direction of, okay, that is really where your heart and passion lies, where your purpose is, it will align with you, here are the next steps, you know, and then, you know, some of them start, but, you know, it, it's not, uh, I'm not creating a business plan or something, you know, not sure. a, you know, but it's, it's really that path. So, um, okay, so the fear of the unknown, and then there is the fear of failing. Okay. okay. Uh, what if I fail? What if this? What you know? The fear of failing always starts with two words. What if? What if I fail? What if I don't make money? What if I lose money? What if this? What if that? It's always what if followed by the worst case scenario. That's right. Yeah. So it's really a challenge, but the only way to turn that around is to follow it by the best case scenario. So instead of what if I fail? Well, what if I succeed? What if I lose money? What if I make money? What if I don't make enough money? What if I make a ton of money? Like. Seriously, you know, it, it's, and, and we're, okay, we're human, okay, this is human. We're human mm -hmm. beings, we tend to think negative first, we tend to, to, to look at the risks first, we fight and flight the tiger, right? But there is no tiger these days, we create our future, right? And so it's really about, um, yeah, changing that, that shifting that, okay, worst case, best case, you know, what if you can make it? Let's, let's make sure you can make it. And then the last one was the fear of what other people say. And we always listen to others. We always, you know, try to do good for others. And I used to be number one people pleaser as well. You know, that's one of the things we want to be liked. Again, we're human sure. beings. We like to be liked, you know, but there's a difference to needing to be liked or, or, or like wanting to be liked or, or needing that approval. You know, there's, there's this, this, this slight line, like, okay, do you need, do you need that, that approval? Right. Because it's important to remember that People actually don't care about you. This is your life and your dream. And at the end of the day, you're born alone, you die alone. And when you look back upon your life, and this was my big drive, still is, when you look back upon your life, when you're like 80, 90 plus, you look back upon your life, whose life have you been living? Yours or someone else's? Yeah. You know, um, I, I don't know how much you you knew about me, but um, Stephanie, my wife and I um, spent five years living on that gorgeous boat right there. <laughs> and I mean, we sold our house. We went, I mean, there was no safety net. We yeah. traveled 12,458 miles in five years and we loved it. Yeah. We were moments of sheer terror and then, you know, just absolute sunrises, sunsets and everything in between. And it was interesting, like you said, what other people think. What when we said we were going to do this, it was definitely outside of our comfort zone. But yeah. people, there was no gray area. People said, "Oh, that's really cool," or "My God, that's really dangerous." How are you doing yeah. that? You know, there was yeah. no middle ground. And so, yeah. like you said, you have to live life for yourself, not because yeah. it's what others think you should be doing. Yeah, there's one, there's one really important thing, Jim, that you make me think of. And by the way, I, I actually almost two years ago, I sold my house, you know, I came to a point where like, okay, freedom is my biggest value. Um, and if ultimate freedom is just selling everything, right? Yeah. And I just sold everything. I'm like, that's it. Now I'm going to travel the world, you know, and that's what I'm doing. That's why now I'm here. But you know, in two months or three months, I'll be somewhere else in the world. Um, and who knows for how long, you know, but um, I created this, I created this lifestyle, you know, and the thing that I want to say that's really important is People are also afraid because they think if they hear us talk, it's like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to have to quit my job tomorrow. No, like, mm. no. I mean, I always talk about that parachute, right? That plan, that transition, it's a bridge. Okay. And so the, the, the most scary is, oh, quitting tomorrow. Of course, that's scary. Don't jump. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't do that. Like, 
and and for me like I, i'm the sole provider i'm alone okay so i i i, I don't have anybody to fall back upon or or anything so I, it, yeah money is important but if you think about it as a, a transition you know like let's figure this out let's make sure you know you have a safety net you you know you you have money coming in you know what to do that but while you're in that transition that's when when i went back to my job after my burnout I went back with a different, like, it was so much more fun because I knew like, hey, I'm not going to stay anyway. I'm just doing it for the money. I had right. some fake smiles. How are you? Performance appraisal. Where do you see yourself next five years? Oh, I'd love to be here. And I'm like, in my mind, I was like, I'll, I'll be long gone, you know? Um, so, yeah. Um, so the transition is, is quite the quite the fun part, actually. So, Rachel, you, you alluded to it a minute ago. Much of your um, transition in your story is now that you travel. The, yeah. the world abroad yeah was that yeah. was that what you realized your goal was or is that a, just a factor of selling everything and now you go one place and then you go to like what what did you envision initially um yeah that's a, a really great question so like you said in 2003 i did move abroad okay so and since then i haven't been back to my native country and that was moving okay so literally your whole household moving you know mm -hmm. registering in a country blah, blah blah so i did that many times um and yeah it's it's quite a lot to deal with you know um uh registering in another country but then when i was um yeah around the time that i was almost burning out and stuff i did start to like travel a bit more like literally just you know two weeks there and then three weeks and then after my burnout i i went part-time i said look you know i'm not ready to go full-time so i could travel like you know a month and i really enjoyed that and so then came a point where, you know, everything, you know, I, I could do more remote work. And so I could like, you know, go one month, two months. At the end of the time in one year, I was gone more than I was home. So, so then I'm like, you know what? I like this lifestyle. And having a home was more of a burden and a cost. Mm -hmm. So, but still scary because I'm like, ooh, I don't have a home anymore. To no fall home back base. In. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, so it was scary, but hey, I, 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 I have I I, lo I fear for me is becoming something exciting. You know, it's not like, you know, I arrive in a country. I don't know anything, anyone. And, you know, I'm alone. So am I afraid? Could I be very afraid? Yeah, I don't know about it. I'm like, yeah, bring it on. Let's see. You know, let's tackle this fear and let's just. Yeah, it's a challenge. It's exciting. And and I always learn. I always yeah. learn. So we got about five minutes left. I know you wrote a book called Awaken Your Confidence. What is the yeah. message? Why did you write that book? Because courage is a yeah. huge part of doing something like this. Yeah, it is because, look, Jim, we're talking now as if, you know, it comes easily, but I'm an introvert. I used to be super shy, like didn't talk to anybody, They're like always afraid to, to come up for myself, afraid to stand up in a meeting, afraid people would laugh about what I say. I had zero confidence, Jim. And mm -hmm. So I really studied confidence and I interviewed a whole lot of big people, like all kinds of backgrounds, like famous speakers, famous author, like literally that you're like, oh, they're born with confidence. That's what I thought. They're born with confidence. No, <laughs> every single one of them told me, look, it's a muscle you have to build. Yes. And we're not born with it. And it's about overcoming fears. It's about facing the fears. It's about taking action. It's about, you know, and that's when I realized, oh my God, I can grow my confidence. And that's when I learned a few years ago, like, okay, I'm going to stop caring what others think. And I'm going to, you know, stand up, look at me and just, I'm unique. You know, whatever you think, I don't care. I, you know, everybody is unique and right. it's okay. And so, yeah. So the message in the book is really like, look, you can grow it. There's a ton of hacks there's stories there's yeah it, it's yeah it's how to become more confident yeah one of the blogs on your um on your website was work and travel how to be a digital nomad yeah. so how did you because for me living on a boat i'm not plugged in anywhere so it's like i had to have all these little portable wi-fi so i could do my coaching calls you yeah. know so i had them with all the major carriers and I, oh it was a you know how many minutes do i have it was crazy how do you oh, do yeah. that is it very similar no, it's easy um, okay. because a lot of, I mean, I do house sitting. So I'm in a house, there's always Wi-Fi. Oh. I always make sure there's Wi-Fi. Yeah. Okay. So, and I don't travel to middle of the sea location areas. Yeah. Like I don't travel to middle of the nowhere. Like I'm always in, in proper, yeah, you know, Wi-Fi connected, you know, places and countries. 
So we've actually looked at that because we're in a, we're renting a home now. We sold our boat after five years, but we re, we don't want to just stay in one place. So we're kind of figuring out what might be uh, our next adventure. And it's interesting. Somebody mentioned you can house sit. Now, I don't know if I want to go just spend a week here or two weeks there, but do you do, are there long-term engagements yeah. with what you're doing? That's all I do. I, I Because I okay. don't care about being somewhere one week because by the time you settle in, you have to move out again. Yeah. So I really need longer stays. Uh, I've been doing this for years now. And so it, it yeah, I like now I'm three months in Australia. Oh so, my goodness. Yeah. And I, I stay in the same house for, um, yeah, you know, sometimes two months, three months. Yeah. And it's, um, so then, you know, you get to get to know the area. I know, you know, where it's supermarket groceries, library, you know, places to work. Um, I'm not a tourist. I don't see myself as a tourist. I just look for places that I can work and good Wi-Fi and decent and, yeah, so I I love 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 doing this. This is so. Yeah. I think if I'm if my memory's good here, 2003 is when you sort of had the initial burnout. But when did you go to be the digital nomad? What what year was that? No, the burnout was around 2009 or something. Okay. Um, no, 2000. No, much later. 2000. Anyway, I don't. Yeah, in in the yeah. Um, the digital nomad was only like uh, three years ago. Okay, time flies, so I'm not. Yeah, and that's working well. That's you. That's yeah. keeping you happy and and feeling oh. like you're alive. Totally. I mean, yeah. I mean, all I need is my laptop, just like you. Internet, Wi-Fi, and 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 my laptop. You know, and that's yeah. it. That's it. I do my coaching. I do my YouTube. You know, YouTube is huge for me. I do my videos. Yeah. That's so awesome. Well, what a pleasure to interview you, uh, Rachel. I'm sure people are fascinated with your life and things like that. How? What's a website where they can uh, connect with you? Yeah, I would say if you can spell my name, Rachel Smets, S-M-E-T-S, -E um, there's two places. Definitely go to my YouTube because I put videos out there every single week to help you, you know, with this lifestyle and creating it and escaping the rat race. Uh, so again, YouTube, Rachel Smets. My website, same thing, rachelsmets.com. Um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Rachel Smets. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Rachel. I greatly appreciate your coming on and for all the way from Australia. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Hey, folks, that wraps up this very special interview with my guest, Rachel Smith. I really want you to connect with her, follow her, learn from her. She's got a huge YouTube channel. I checked it out. It's tons of videos. You'll find them inspiring. Maybe it'll scare the heck out of you. I don't know, but, you know, shake you up a little bit. But she's somebody that, you know, kind of stepped up and is 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 living her best life. So do that. Connect with me at GetJimPalmer.com. That's my home base. Again, for the Dream Business Mastermind and Coaching Program, that's DreamBizCoaching.com. Remember, you can get free digital copies of all of my books, all six of my books at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and the iBookstore. But until this time next week, another fantastic interview. I am Captain Jim Palmer, the Dream Business Coach. You take good care.